Good morning, everyone. How are you? This is Jorge Alvarado, CMO for Euphoria Science. I'm covering for Craig Smith, who is uh, traveling today from Dallas. And uh, oh, guys, we cannot wait to, for you guys to see what is going to be presented at the, at the event in June. Uh, that trip that uh, Craig is coming from is uh, it's, it's very important for something that we're going to announce. So um, I'm going to, before we start, I'm going to try to connect to Facebook so that we can do uh, the, 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 the broadcast there as well. Let's see if Facebook is willing to do it today. And we will start in uh, just uh, 30 seconds. Nope, it's not uh, connecting to Facebook. That happens sometimes, guys. Sorry about that. But uh, uh, we, have, we have a very important meeting today. We have a Obviously, our great guest, uh, she's so generous, sharing all this uh, knowledge. Uh, for many of us, this is new. This is new language. This is new knowledge that we are all learning a little bit every day. And I really appreciate Dr. Jen Myers for sharing all this information. Uh, many of you already know her in person. She's a lovely person. She's also very uh, kind and always, always ready to share her knowledge. Uh, she's a certified genetic and nutrigenetic specialist, and she has so many letters under her name, as you can see there, that uh, I think there's only one letter missing from the alphabet. So congratulations, Dr. Jen. It's such a pleasure to have you here. And uh, today we're going to cover some in the news nips. I think uh, last week you, you mentioned that we are going to be talking about detox, which is such an important topic. Uh, go ahead and, and welcome uh, Dr. Jen Myers. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Jorge, for that. I appreciate your, your very nice, kind words. Um, hey, everybody. I see some great uh, coverage that we have here from a lot of different places. Thanks for, for joining, joining me today on this, uh, I'm going to say, extremely special day. And it is special because, uh, um, oh, right here in St. George. Wow, awesome. Hi, Lacey. Um, it is my daughter's graduation from high school. I'm going to try my best to maintain my composure. I've only been emotional once, maybe twice so far today. Uh, so, um, yeah, so we have a lot of family in town. It's a great day. Uh, red is her school color, so I had to support and wear red today for her as well uh, as she's getting ready to, to go through summer to get ready to start her uh, venture into pre-dental. She's going to be an orthodontist. I'm super excited about that. Um, and, and what a great gift, right, to give these, these graduates, you know, the, the gift of, of health, the gift of wellness, and, and part of her graduation gift uh, was a genetic test. I've tested her in the past, but I was able to do some different SNPs on her this time, uh, so I could send her off with the proper things um, to go to college with and, and to be able to help support her overall health and wellness, right? I mean, that's, that's important, so you want to give a grad a gift, Give them the gift of, of understanding their genetics and their blueprints so we can help support them in the healthiest ways. Let's start them right now and start them young. So um, thank you, everybody, for the congratulations. I appreciate it. Um, it's, it's, you guys have been great uh, in offering your support and your kind words. Uh, so Jorge, let's, let's just go to the next slide where we start talking about these SNPs, right? So today is detoxification. Oh, when people hear detox or they hear the word detoxification, it can be slightly overwhelming because they're thinking, oh, I'm not going to feel well. Flu-like symptoms, having to use the restroom, uh, you know, headaches, die-off effect. Everybody seems to, to, to think that detox is a bad word. They don't realize that our body does this naturally on its own. It's constantly trying to rid the waste. We do this in different phases, which I'm going to talk about today as well. So our body really wants to be able to, to get rid of these toxins and these things that we're constantly exposed to on a daily basis. But there are times, of course, when we look at these genetic SNPs and these pathways and we realize that there are people who aren't able to do this process as efficiently as we're supposed to or we're, or we're meant to do or we'd like to do it. It's not a bad thing per se. It can be a bad thing if we don't understand. I'm sorry, they're all whistling out here. Something's going on, so I'm just going to pretend I didn't hear it. 
Um, if, if we don't understand our, our blueprint, um, then how do we know if our body's detoxing properly or not? How do we know if we're susceptible to, to not being able to clear all these industrial carcinogens, which I'll talk about, and all these contaminants that we're constantly exposed to, right? So if you don't mind, Jorge, let's, let's start. Let's go to the first snip, which I think we should talk about. So first off, actually, let me ask a question. When we think about or we hear the word detox, what's the first organ? everybody thinks of type it in for me first organ first organ first body part liver yes liver liver everybody goes to liver right which is which is very accurate all these toxins are pulled into the liver liver pulls out all these toxins to be able to start this process of ridding them gallbladder kidneys bowel lungs skin, sinuses, reproductive, there's a lot of different parts of the body that are included and, and are part of our detoxification process. But of course, we only think about the liver when we talk about detox. So, or sometimes people think of the gut and balance because they think, you know, they're going to be using the restroom a lot more, um, which is part of the process as well. So uh, the liver is very important to take care of. There are three phases within our detoxification process. Before I get into this SNP, let's go ahead and talk about those three. Phase one, which is part of where this SNP comes into play, uh, is toxins, right? These fat-soluble toxins that we're constantly exposed to, um, that's part of phase one. This is also where pharmacogenetics comes into play. So it's cool that, uh, uh, that to know that we've got that genetic component available to, to people and to patients, um, not through euphoria currently, but who knows? Uh, so phase one toxins, of course, and this is in regards to uh, metabolic toxins. That's what's left over after our metabolic processes, right, within all the cells. Uh, so that's a metabolic part. Uh, microorganisms, which include viruses, bacteria, fungus, uh, those are things that are part of phase one detoxification and things that we need to get out of our system as well, right? Contaminants arsenic, lead, mercury, those kind of things are, are contaminants. Hairspray, right? Think about all these wonderful things that we have to do every day to make ourselves look the way that we, we want to look. Hairsprays, perfumes, all these things are contaminants, right? Uh, a car exhaust, that's also contaminants. We all have to drive. Um, insecticides, pesticides, if we have any gardening or we're, we're, we're living or grew up on a farm, that's a really important question for me to ask. Did you grow up on a farm? Were you ever part of home restorations? Those are all contaminants that we're exposed to, right? Uh, so that also includes food additives. All these things that are added to our food so they can have this, have this longer shelf life and stay uh, fresh uh, longer so that they can be um, put out there longer for more people to buy and more people to ingest and, and all these things. And, and so food additives are big things, drugs. And I'm not talking about just street drugs. I'm also talking about medications. Uh, those can, can create a toxicity in the body as well. Lymph system, that was a good one, Angela. I wanted to point out, she said lymph system. Somebody else, everybody else missed that. That's a huge component too, right? Alcohol, right? So alcohol is another, it goes to the liver. It is, it is processed in the liver as a toxin. So that's something else that, that I'm not saying stop drinking because I had my mimosa this morning to help celebrate all this. But um, everything in moderation, of course, and we want to make sure that the body can break these toxins down and uh, eliminate them. So that's phase one, is getting these fat-soluble toxins, these byproducts of our me metabolic system, these contaminants that we're constantly exposed to, even if you walk outside and take a deep breath, guess what? That's part of it as well. So then we move on to phase two. Phase two is, is these waste products that are then water soluble, right? That's the elimination from the body. So just examples, gallbladder to bile to stool. How many people have had their gallbladder taken out? Eh, you don't need that organ. Let's just take it out, right? So I, I'm hoping, I've seen within the medical profession that we're becoming a little bit more aware that the gallbladder is quite important within the detoxification pathway and as well as many other things. So they are less uh, aggressive, I guess is the word, when it comes to taking this organ out that's really important to us. Um, also the kidneys, right? Kidneys uh, to urine, right? So we have to waste, we have to get rid of that waste that, that way. So those are two kind of examples of those waste products that are water soluble. And that's phase two. 
phase three um, is detoxification of kind of these um, reactive mechanisms or molecules, right? Oxidative stress, free radicals. Uh, that's part of phase three is being able to, to get rid of these byproducts of our natural biological systems as well, like our mitochondria. A lot of times mitochondria will create, will create these byproducts that this specific gene that we're gonna talk about today comes in and actually helps get rid of and detoxify. If there's a weakness there or a variation within that SNP and how those enzymes and how that works within that biochemical process, it's really difficult for our bodies to do that. And therefore, all this waste accumulates. And next thing you know, increased oxidative stress, free radicals, inflammation, the immune system goes into overdrive, as we talked about last week, when it's hyperactive and it, it's, it's on high alert constantly. So it's really not functioning in a healthy way. So that happens, and then it can lead to chronic disease. Um, and if we can't get rid of these products, anesthesia, I forgot to say anesthesia on our medication. Um, anesthesia is a big part of that as well. It does cross the blood brain barrier. We need to be able to get that out so we can decrease our risk for Alzheimer's and dementia. Has anyone ever here ever had a family member uh, that went and had a surgery, and next thing you know, they come out and they're, they're either going through dementia or they're just not the same person? I have, and, and I've seen my grandmother go downhill and eventually pass away uh, because of that, and it's, it's sad. Uh, but if we recognize these things again, and I say it over and over and over again, this is a tool, not a weapon, right? Okay, so those are your three phases of detoxification. That, that just helps understand what we're looking at, and guess what, euphoria looks at a snip from every single phase how cool is that? So the first one being from phase one, it talks about uh, this gene, the EPHX1 gene, right? So this is really important to us because this supports the detoxification of, of, of a vast amount, a lot amount of pollutants, which I just spoke about, that we're constantly exposed to on a daily basis. Uh, us women put on our makeup, we, we do things to our hair, we put our lotions on. I believe I read somewhere through a fun, fun fact uh, that women are exposed to over 150 different chemicals just by getting ready in the morning. I, I even think that's a small number. It's amazing how many things we actually um, put on our bodies and into our bodies to, to look the way that we want to look, of course, and, and that's, that's okay, but let's make sure our body can process these things, right? So this also includes things like cigarette smoke. Um, I, I just got done watching the show Mad Men, and smoking was very elegant back then, of course. Uh, it wasn't bad for you. They didn't know that it was a carcinogen at that time, but secondhand smoke, uh, smoking, uh, firsthand smoke, a uh, terrible, terrible, please, please, if you know anyone that does it, try to talk them out of it. Uh, car exhaust, pesticides, herbicides, gardening, you know, we love to grow our own foods. In fact, I know a Euphoria representative here, I don't know if she's on the call, but she has her, and I'm sure there's many of you, I just think speaking of her in particular, grows her own foods. There's more natural ways to do this besides glycophosphate, and we know that glycophosphate has actually just recently paid out a big lawsuit uh, for carcinogenic and cancer type effects. Um, so we know they can cause bad things in our system, but if we understand where those system hiccups are, we can go in and support them and help speed this process out to get these contaminants out of our system, of course. So wood burning, did anybody know that, that standing next to a fire when you're outside and it's, it's a wonderful thing to be by a fire, but even that releases carcinogens and contaminants that we need to detox from. So um, this, this EPHX1 gene or enzyme um, also has an effect on, on the liver as well and it causes what I like to call liver congestion. Uh, this is not where we see liver failure or anything like that. This is where the liver gets a little congested and it's not able to do what it does best and the best, most efficient way. So we do want to go in and help support that. That's a great, uh, of course, they're all great organs, but that's a great organ to focus on. But as you will see as we talk more about this, there's a lot of other things, including the largest organ in our body, which is our skin, uh, that help us detox. And it's important that we support all three phases. This EPHX1 gene supports phase one and helping rid contaminants, excuse me, contaminants, that we're constantly exposed to on a daily basis, right? And also helps influence the production of glutathione. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of glutathione before, but if you haven't looked at it, look it up. It's the, um, the most 
aggressive detoxification, master detoxifier in all of ourselves is what I tell patients. This is, this is a huge component to our detoxification pathway. It follows that NRF2 pathway, if anybody have heard of that. Uh, NAC, or, N, or um, excuse me, N-acetylcysteine is a precursor to glutathione. All these things are made by our body naturally. But if we have a hiccup in some of these variants, we don't produce it as efficiently, and therefore these processes don't happen as well as they should. Okay. Jorge, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go on to phase two, our next SNP, so I can get through these and make sure we get through some questions. Phase two, right? So, so phase two is our waste product part, right? That I was talking about is being able to eliminate these toxins in a water soluble form from our body. So the GSTP1 is, is, is one of the glutathione S transferases. And this is the protection uh, mechanism for all of our mucosal um, membranes, right? Against external toxins, lotions, things like that, um, as well as inhalants and also anything environmental uh, is, is part of, of where this gene comes into play. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of these enzymes, these GSTP1 enzymes in, in many of our cells, right? Concentrated mainly, listen to this, here's where we start to get into all these other organs, the skin the lungs, the bladder, right? That's just a couple of them. I'm also going to talk about the sinuses, um, the, the reproductive organs. All these things are present and helping us detoxify and getting rid of these carcinogens, right? So these remove, uh, this gene helps remove, excuse me, um, cytotoxic things, right? So those are things that are toxic to living cells and can actually kill them. Um, and carcinogenic agents, um, from, from things like what we call intracellular spaces, right? So this works on, on any kind of mucosal membrane in any intracellular space, right? Again, present in these mucosal membranes. Um, let's think. Okay, so I'm just going to go through some of the some of what I'm talking about and, and some of the conditions that we see that come out of this. The bowel, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome and leaky gut. This can be a, a issue or a problem because of this SNP not properly doing its job, right? The lungs, asthma, COPD, emphysema. What, what are we getting from all smoke, right? And things like that. Asthma is a genetic predisposition, but it's triggered by certain things, correct? I mean, it's not the root cause. It's triggered by something that this gene isn't doing properly when it comes to strengthening and detoxifying from our lungs. The bladder, cystitis, interstitial cystitis, these are things that happen, uh, bladder cancer, these are things that can happen within the bladder, lung cancer, colon cancer. I mean, I, I hate to use these big nasty words, but if we don't detoxify these pollutants and carcinogens or our body doesn't do it efficiently, it can predispose, predispose or lead to, to certain things like that. Also sinuses, chronic sinusitis. Um, that can be a, a problem and a concern as well. Allergies, the skin, the biggest one I see with skin with this SNP in particular, especially in my younger pa uh, patients is um, eczema. So any kind of eczema, psoriasis, um, anything like that that can be um, part of the skin that, that causes, there's a trigger that causes something for the immune system. Oh my gosh, the immune system's involved in detoxification? Absolutely, right? We're learning that everything is so interconnected uh, and our body needs to work as a whole. We used to think peace, peace, peace. No, we got to look at the big picture. We got to get this quantum physics view of the body and be able to see how everything is connected. And that's what these genetics, uh, these genetic SNPs and, and our biochemistry tells us. There's so much connection between everything. We can't focus on one thing anymore. Um, and that's what the beauty of this is. And this is why I love this so much is it's detailed. It drives people crazy sometimes where I'm like, so can I take this? Well, depends. Let me look at your SNPs. And they're like, oh, okay. Can I take, oh, they can take this. I can take this. Well, not really because you have this SNP. So there's so much uh, detail and personalization here. But being able to understand these weaknesses within phase one uh, with that EPH um, exo one gene, phase two with that GSTP1 gene and all of these different organs that are involved in detoxification. Um, and, and now, of course, this all affects, again, like I said, the glutathione production in the body, right, which is the second most powerful anti-inflammatory besides steroids. 
think about that. The second most powerful anti-inflammatory besides steroids is something our body naturally produces. How cool is that? But if there's a hiccup or variant in here, we want to make sure we support that, right? Who wants to take steroids forever? I don't. I'm sure none of you do either. So let's go ahead and, and uh, move on to the next one, if you don't mind. Phase three, Jorge, thank you. Uh, that SOD2 gene, right? I feel like this one is, is more powerful than people think. Um, a superoxide dismutase. Um, and, and this has a lot to do with reducing free radicals and oxidative stress. Um, and this is phase three, right? So this works on, on um, being able to rid things like industrial carcinogens from the body. What are those? We talked about some, but that's um, arsenic, asbestos, plastic. <sighs> plastic. Um, when we get these little water bottles and we're drinking our plastic water bottles, guys, carry glass. Carry a glass jar. I have these, these big glass jars that we carry store our water in to put the water cooler, uh, put in the water cooler. My girls carry stainless steel or glass things wherever they go, always drinking out of glass. Get rid of the plastic, guys, and please don't heat your plastic up in the microwave. Oh! If you have to heat something up in the microwave, I understand it happens, put it in glass. Please do not, uh, do not heat uh, plastic up in the microwave. Uh, that is an industrial carcinogen, um, as well as medications. Medications are industrial carcinogens, right? Especially if we can't detox them out of ourselves and our body efficiently. Tobacco smoke, of course, um, smog. People, I don't know if there's anyone here from Pittsburgh, um, you know, who live in an area where it's, it's, it, there's a more industrial Salt Lake City. Oh my gosh, I go up there and you can't even see from one side of the city to the other. It's crazy. Um, and I know there's some euphoria people here who live in, uh, who live in Salt Lake. Uh, so make sure that we're, we're looking into these things so we can clear these things. That's where you live. Sometimes you can't avoid or change that, right? Um, also food additives, certain food additives or, or carcinogens or industrial carcinogens. So when I say to try to avoid or eliminate or decrease our exposure to industrial carcinogens, those are some of the things that I'm referring to. This gene, again, reduces free radicals and oxidative stress. Industrial carcinogens are part of uh, creating that. Um, oxygen radicals causes death to our cells and damages DNA. Yikes, right? So this can lead us to certain uh, chronic disease and illness. This converts what we call the bad superoxide uh, into the better hydrogen peroxide, uh, which are much less harmless, of course, uh, to our bodies than that, that superoxide, um, which is actually a mitochondrial waste product. Wait a minute. So mitochondria is also part of detoxification. Wow, right? Immune, inflammatory, mitochondria, methylation, methylation, those, those ones we talked about before, MTHFR and uh, the MTRR, those are part of detoxification and helping our body create glutathione. It's all connected, uh, which is just the coolest part of this to know that we're looking at all these things that have an effect on how our body acts as a whole. So these individual little SNPs are really important to understand, to know hey, how does our body and our biochemistry react to all these different things that we have to do and we're possibly exposed to on a daily basis? Think about occupation. I ask people all the time, what's your occupation? Are you a painter? Are, are you a mechanic? I mean, we need these guys, right? And, and women, sorry. We need these people out in the field, these technical jobs, but they're exposed to things that if their body can't get rid of it, it can become an issue. All right, let me get through this. I realize we're getting close on time, guys. I'm sorry, but this is an awesome and a very important topic, of course, so I do go on about it. So mitochondria produces this energy and leaves this superoxide, um, which is kind of similar to car exhaust, right? So if our bodies can't get rid of it and it's left in there, it, it can accumulate, cause oxidative stress, free radicals, uh, which causes cellular and DNA death and damage uh, over time. So there's a link between all these different things, right? So you're starting to see the connection, I'm sure, I hope. Um, we need antioxidants. That's where these antioxidant ingredients come in, antioxidant-rich foods. And when I say fruits and vegetables, guys, I'm not referring to watermelon and bananas, and I'm also not in including potatoes uh, and tomatoes and things like that into, into what we're talking about. 
French fries and potato chips are not a vegetable. I'm so sorry. Uh, I had a guy ask me that and, and he was dead serious. So I kind of chuckled and then I realized, oh, he's not kidding. Um, so when I'm talking about fruits and veggies, and I know a lot of people really like a lot of support when it comes to lifestyle and things. I'm talking about berries. Um, I, I'm referring to those green vegetables. And of course, there's some some people that have allergies and things or sensitivities to those, and if they have are on Coumadin or Warfarin, we have to be careful with those green leafy vegetables. So we find other ways to get these, these high antioxidants into the body. Glutathione, we increase glutathione production, right? So that's what we're doing here is we're, we're giving the body things that it needs to increase our antioxidant effect naturally and bypass a little bit these systems where we have these slight hiccups so we can get rid of these things because if we don't, we potentiate our risk for chronic disease and illness, uh, and we want to support overall health and wellness, of course. So detoxification is super important, super important genes to help get rid of all these things that we're exposed to on a daily basis. Okay, I'm going to have, I have five minutes. Woo! Um, Jorge, keep me on track if you don't mind. I'm going to kind of look at some of these questions and see if there's anything that I can answer. Okay, Sharia Snips in your bonus report. Green here are taking, let's say, red for a gene or helping repair of that gene or just supporting it to not get worse. No, they're actually helping Sherry. So when we, we put these ingredients in there, it's not to not help it get worse, it's there. We can't, we can't make it go away. We're actually able to go in and change the biochemistry of the body to understand. Sometimes we have to give the body an active form of something because it has a, with methylation, it has an, a deficiency of being able to do that process on its own. So if we give the body the right form of these things in the right amount, we handle it very well. I know I've said this a hundred times, guys. I see kidney um, functions increase when I'm working on their detoxification. Kidney functions increase when I'm working on their detoxification and kidney failure patients even. It's incredible the things we do when we give the body exactly what it needs in the right amount. The body understands how to handle it. So, um, okay, I'm sorry, Cheryl, let's see. Uh, SOD2 uh, is red, GSTP1 is yellow. I think you got it from your mom. You probably did. Uh, at least that SOD2 being in red, you got at least part of it from mom, right? This condition is mentioned, you have many. Will this nutrition support stronger um, elim elimination? Yes, it will, right? So it's going to help the body understand how to, to detox a little bit more efficiently. Um, and that's why these, looking at these SNPs is so super important is we can understand your weaknesses and we can go and support them, right? Um, let's see, so if you have reds for these SNPs, my your body is not detoxing at its best. Jill, that's correct. So it's not that your body can't detox at all. It's just that it doesn't do it as efficiently as it should, right? So we wanna go in there and support that and give that antioxidant effect or help increase the body, understand uh, this is how I'm supposed to get rid of these, these carcinogens and these um, everything that we're exposed to. I mean. Think about it. I, we have so many downwinders here, you know, on, on this side of the state that it's amazing how many cancers and stuff we've seen because of this. That's something they can't avoid, right? And, and a lot of times I'm not saying because we work on this that you're never going to have an issue with that. Um, you, again, like I say all the time, you can't go out and smoke cigarettes and drink all day and be like, oh, I'm detoxing naturally with euphoria, so I'm going to be just fine. That's not the case. Lifestyle is a huge cofactor, of course, in all of this. Um, so we want to make sure that we give the body exactly what it needs so it can do what it's supposed to do. We're self-healing mechanisms, right? Our body's supposed to heal from things. Um, within living in this world that we live in, which is a wonderful world, I have a great example of that today. Um, we are exposed to things though. Uh, to be able to have the things that we have and do the things that we do, driving our cars, building our homes, all these things, they're, they're constantly exposed to us. So if we can teach our body, let's efficiently detox in the best of ways, um, then we'll see better all health and wellness. Let's put it that way. So there are some more questions. I have a couple minutes. I'm so sorry. Um, I just pulled up the q and I always forget about this. People on blood pressure medicine come off and being on nutrition while supporting specific genes tied to cardiovascular. Ron, we're going to talk about cardiovascular stuff next week. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so yes, we've seen some good results in clinic um, to be able to pull people off specific medications because their body starts to, to efficiently work better, their lifestyles become better, um, and therefore they no longer need specific medications. And now it doesn't mean 100% of the time, but I see it happen a lot. So we'll talk about cardiovascular support uh, next week, guys. I have about a minute 
um, react to this in minimal dosage. Someone's allergic to strawberries. Um, so, right, we're working on, we don't want any anaphylaxis. That's the case, we need to pull that out. If it's an intolerance or an allergy, we need to work on the, the immune system and the detoxification system. So hopefully we can introduce those wonderful, yummy fruits back into our diet again, right? Um, I think I answered, what you can say about the bioavailability of nutrition, so maybe congestive heart failure. Oh, we're going to talk so much about um, uh, cardiovascular stuff next week, Mary. So we'll talk about cardiovascular or um, congestive heart failure um, as well. Um, I'm going to get into, John, the ingredients. Once I get through these SNPs, we're going to start breaking down these ingredients, guys, and talking about them a little bit more. AC11, that's a huge one that I've been reading quite a bit about, thanks to some of my friends and, and, and learning more about it myself. So we're going to have some great uh, ingredient information. I'm going to bring that out to you as much as I can. So AC11 is your favorite. Sherry, I had a feeling that you were going to say that. Um, so thank you all. It is 1230 on the dot. I have family in town. I have my beautiful 18 year old daughter getting emotional just thinking about it, who's going to be walking across the stage tonight. So thank you all for joining me today. Uh, thank you for allowing me to share the things that I love, the things that I love to talk about, um, the things that I love to see improve. You guys are in a great space with this you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, people are gonna feel better. And it's so nice to be able to share this with so many more people because me as one little person can only affect so many. So share it, you love it, tell everybody uh, because it really does help our overall health and wellness. So thank you all again so much. Jorge, thank you for being my host for today. Um, you're welcome anytime. We can tell Craig, he can take a break whenever he wants you. you are <laughs> thank you so much, Dr. Jen. You're so generous, and uh, this just reminds us how, what a beautiful product and a big responsibility we have to get it to every single home everywhere. So thank you so much. It was a lot of information, dense information, because it's so rich, and we are going to uh, apologize again. The Facebook in, uh, connection didn't work, but we recorded this one, and we're going to post it on Facebook as well. So see you guys uh, next week, same time, same channel, <laughs> and uh, thank you so much again, Dr. Jen. Congratulations for this uh, important day. Thank you. Thank you so much.